Good morning everybody. Today we're going to have a look at the Do4 530. The bathing platform and transom is almost as big as some of what they call the beach areas on the motorboats nowadays. Under here you have your bathing ladder and you can see this one's actually been fitted out with dinghy davits so these actually come out telescopically. Both port and starboard the helm seats fold down but just under here under the starboard section where you have the hydraulics it's your bathing platform that's where your life raft will go in and as we get up you'll see that you do actually have access from it by the starboard helm on deck so very very handy to actually get up into the cockpit you have the steps on the port side each helm has a lift up step like this it's pretty much standard on most boats underneath this particular helm on the port side you have access to your gas locker you'll be able to see the drain down there one thing i'd like to point out which i think is quite good is your diesel fill is aft so you're not having to pull your fuel line across the deck or across your cockpit and getting any sort of diesel all over the place manual pump for your build and your helms i'll give you a, a quick look so your helms are as aft as possible to give you as much space and entertaining space in the cockpit as they can you have a central seat here this can actually be optioned out underneath so that you have this section I'll find some photographs so this section is a grill and storage area carbon wheels both port and starboard this helm is set up with a compass and a b and g chart plot and just down to the side here you have a lumar 50 self tailing electric winch and then just forward of that you have a second lumar 50 self tailing this one's actually manual what i quite like what they've done with this boat is they've put a really handy bin in between both winches for all your tail ends so you can keep things nice and tidy and you'll also see you have your shore power so you, one is for standard shore power and then you have a second one for air conditioning and stuff like that if that's an option you've gone for so you're not overloading the system as a general rule you can see the line so it will be your main sheet and so on you can actually bring back through underneath the deck and directly to your winches you have your emergency tiller here and while we set in the middle of the cockpit which is immense you have a large B&G 15 inch Zeus chart plotter it's actually a very handy spot and then we'll pop over to the starboard helm you have your engine Yamaha um, start stop here and your throttle controls are just down below so ideal for not that you should I'm not condoning it but you know, you can use your foot. This one's been set up. I'll see if I can find some B-roll for you of, it's basically, it's not an auto docking system, but if you have bow and stern thrusters, you can then use the joystick over and it will basically take the boat into a pontoon or a marina wall or something like that. Really, really easy. It takes a lot of stress out of the mooring. So very clever bit of kit. And once again, you have another B&G Zeus chart plotter. Your autopilot controls and anchor with a chain counter forward. Once again, Lumar self-tailing electric winches, both here and this one is actually electric. We'll just go forward and have a look on the deck. Both starboard and port side, you have access to marina wall or pontoons if you want. Some good non-slip deck, really, really wide. And there is, it's not a bad tow rail actually. It's pretty good for a production yacht. And you'll see up on top of your cabin roof, the inset for your spray hood. So that can be folded down and tucked away really quite nicely. Your main sheet traveler which is really cool you know you're going to get better trimming sail position grab handles running most of the way forward if you have your spray hood up there's going to be like handles on your spray hood and then you're going to be able to come forward get your grab handles along here and go up to the mast if you need to or you know keep going further forward 
So there's your deck management system. So you imagine you've got, you know, all your reefing lines, um, halyards and etc. coming down through and they'll run through underneath the deck and out to the bank of clutches, which we'll have a look at in a minute. Lumar Genoa track, nice bit of kit, outboard shrouds, flush hatches all the way through. And there is an option if you wish to have a self-tacking jib. So I suppose if you're chartering or weekend sailing, you might go for that option, but I'd much rather stick with a Genoa. We'll have a look at the hatches when we get inside, but as I've said before, they're all flush hatches. So you have a Lumar anchor windlass and a single bow roller on your bow sprit. Point for Code Zero, Spinnaker, Jenica. Coming back, a small hatch here. And then this goes into a cavernous sail locker, a fender locker. There's probably enough room to put in uh, deflated or semi-deflated paddle boards you know, bicycles and stuff like that. And then access to your anchor locker and windlass is through that hatch there. And I'll leave a link in the video for a company called Sienna and they make radio headsets. So communication forward with your partner or your family when you are anchoring or mooring, it'll take all the stress out of it. We're actually gonna be testing the product over the next couple of months on boat deliveries and so on so we can give you a full-on review well, these guys have a big history they've worked for decades with harley davidson and bmw for motorbike helmets and so on so they sort of know what they're doing so as you can see giving you that image aft the beam is pretty much carried all the way aft so they're maximizing the space as much as possible let's get you back into the cockpit there's space for at least 10 or 12 10 i reckon comfortably around the cockpit table and then you have this really nice area here fridge cool box in the table which is handy for those beers and iced tea and so on drink holders in the middle and then forward more storage or cool, cool bin there which is pretty cool the light that pops up here it's nice to see the handles forward table fully extended it is absolutely massive so there's a very good lazarette on the starboard side so any spare mooring lines you know buckets all the sort of stuff that we have on deck and that stainless steel pole you see there that's for your emergency steering right just by your companionway both port and starboard um, the starboard side has been set up with Lumar 50 self tailing uh, electric winches where your lines come out that we were talking about earlier that run under the deck and you've got your bank you know bank of clutches there and then that is mirrored but this is manual it's a 50 self tailing and that is mirrored there you can see all the mousing lines your washboards are on a slider and if you actually look if i get the camera there you'll see that they actually fold away concertinaed underneath the deck which is a nice neat solution and you can lift this area up and use it for storage and so on too, if you wish. And while I'm here, before we go down, I'll just give you a quick pano so you, you know, appreciate the full beam of this boat. I'm really impressed. We've been fans of Do 4 for years. The first one we looked at and went out on was a Do 4 425 Grand Large. It's a very nice 42 foot uh, family boat. All right, today I'm gonna to start on the port side. We'll start with the port aft cabin. So you have a very large berth. It's not an island berth. The handy thing within this cabin of not having a lazarette, as you can see, you have pretty much full head height, except for where you get to the pillows. So to give you, it's not very bright in here, I'm afraid. But to give you an idea, even on this section, which is the lower, lower section, you know, I'm 5859, I've got plenty of headroom here, and even if I just come over, then I can't, I can only just touch 
um, the side decks up there. So there is plenty of room. So you have two large overhead lockers there. Plenty of space and storage over there. And there's a vent for heating or air con, depending on, you know, time of year and how you've switched it. And a very handy spot for mobile phones. On the inside, you have access to mechanical department there and some really nice port lights to look out for in the morning when you're under an anchor, you know, in the Balearics or somewhere like that. And privacy blinds for your windows. Nice hanging locker. More storage, just to upset you. And there. And this one, I suppose, would be your VIP cabin because it gives you access to, so your day heads. So we'll close that door. Large, separate shower. Corian molded sink area and a Jabsco electric freshwater flush. So we'll close that one off. Just behind the door here, you have a very large access panel for your mechanical space. We'll just come out. You'll see the companion there on my right. During the day, you have access into your day heads and shower through the saloon here. So very handy. This can be configured with three heads, two heads, depending on what options you choose. We'll try and get some images to come up on the screen for you. And then over on the starboard side, it pretty much mirrors the port side aft cabin. The only difference in here is because you have that large lazarette, you lose that space and that head space and the two um, overhead lockers aft. But otherwise it's pretty much exactly the same. Access to mechanical department and the same down along here. And a really nice hanging locker. Um, something I didn't point out in the other cabin. Have ventilation out deck side and also into the cockpit. So plenty of ventilation. I'm gonna come out of here. And then if you wish, I'm going to show these heads, but once again, it's pretty much a mirror to the other cabin, except for you don't have X access from the cabin itself. So once again, electric freshwater flush toilet, sink and separate shower with ventilation. It's a 53 foot boat, so you have plenty of space. On the starboard side, you have a really nice L-shaped chaise long sort of lounging area, make a nice sea berth, and it gives you a small office space or nav desk, depending on how you want to use it nowadays. Your main um, switch panel for, you know, your pumps and digital touch display to see how your water tanks are, diesel tanks, and so on. And just below is your B&G VHF handheld, static VHF and fusion stereo. Little overhead locker, these open up and you can get access behind and the same for the electrics over here. And you have another overhead locker there. This is not a chain plate, it's just support for your Genoa tracks and running gear and give it a little extra strength. And then I'm gonna sit down here and show you over the other side. So it's nice and far away. You have a U-shaped saloon, salon, um, with a really nice bench seat. So just to cheer everybody up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you easily get eight people around the table. They've laid it all up, but it's a intelligent table, I suppose. So your corners all fold in. You can turn it round so it's a nice coffee table or while you're underway, it's a lot, lot smaller. Fold them all out so you have a very large dining table. And this one's been optioned out. So once it's folded out too, the whole table can be dropped down and you can turn it into a massive bed, really. And if you have the option, for a television somewhere, you know, on your wall, It'll give you a really nice area in the evening or whatever to 
watch our channel on YouTube while you're having your gin and tonic. So forward central, this is I think one of the signatures for do for now is they're actually their forward galley. It's for some people it's a bit like Marmite, you either love it or you hate it. I really like it. Okay, I appreciate you have a long way to go if you're making a cup of tea, but it's central, so cooking and being down below and so on, there's less movement and hopefully it'll keep the seasick down a little bit. Straightforwards, you have a three burner gimbaled stove and then just to the right of that, a top loading freezer. There is plenty of storage to put your bits and pieces in and all your gubbins and obviously every now and then, I won't point them all out, but there are mains plugs everywhere and some very good overhead um, lockers. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight over that side. Dual stainless steel sink. So here and here, they've set this one up. So you can drain all your stuff on it. Fresh water and salt water. Or well, this one's actually been adapted. So this is your overflow tap for uh, your water maker. So you can test your water from your water maker and so on, which is pretty handy. On the separating island, there are a load of shelves. I think it's quite clever that they've set the galleys up on the do fours like this now because it actually allows you to have so much extra space and equipment in your boat and then coming over to the starboard side part of the galley there's your pop-up telly so it will come up through here all on hydraulics and then you know your usual gubbins self-closing drawers nicely done I need to speed this up because I've got to get around the 430, which is brand new for 2024. It's their new boat. So stainless steel freezer underneath, or you can have it as a fridge if you wish. And then a 100 or 120 litre fridge up above. More counter space. And somewhere drop down there and you can have a microwave optioned out to have a microwave in here um, this you can actually have i'm pretty sure you can have it pop up so that there's a you know one of your little doser coffee machines in here nicely done and then forward you have your owner's suite so a large double um semi-island berth it's really nice it's what you expect there's some nice sort of surrounding and material. Great port lights, I'll give you a slow pano. So you're probably bored of listening to my voice jabbering on all the time. Forward, you have two opening hatches. So ventilation is brilliant. And these are those big sort of skylight windows we saw when we were up on deck. So this cabin is just gonna be flooded with light. And if you don't want it getting too hot, have privacy blinds and mosquito netting if you wish. I'm only going to open one of these, so we wouldn't want to talk about storage too much. You have one, two opening um, lockers there. This one's been left open and then two massive mirrored ones forward. And then that's the same on the starboard side. Large hanging locker nicely set up I shall do this side quickly first so on the starboard side you have your electric flush toilet sink and cabinets we'll get a look around this boat again in September at the can boat show so if there's anything I've missed we can go around it again and you know do it all and then be your heads and shower are separate there is an absolutely massive shower in here so if i show you in the mirror you might get an idea hi everybody you might get an idea of well two or three of you can get in here easy you have a little party <laughs> and uh, an extra sink you know showering isn't your flavor um you like to be salty and stinky 
and then there is both obviously in the heads too there's an opening hatch up here okay i'm going to come out of here um i know it was quick all the specs are going to come across the screen for engine water tanks fuel tanks everything else if there's anything you want to know just let me know in the comments below if you have any questions and so on um, like i say we're going to be able to have a look around again in september don't forget guys hit that like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one